All right. Hey, hey girl, hey, we are back and I'm so excited. Uh, Queen Chan Chan here from A Broadcast Podcast and it's been a minute and I'm just so glad to be here. And of course, we have back the OG, you guys. We have the OG. (laughs) Do you guys remember Edward Carr? Well, we've just found out recently that it wasn't Edward Carr, not recently, but during the, the podcast time, we had to like kind of, you know, make a little AKA uh, um, a reference to Mr. My, my, my co-producer and my editor, but we are now talking to Mr. Devin Carbaugh. Yay! Oh, we're, we're really, really uh, out there now. So there's no putting the genie back in the bottle, I guess. You are exposed. Thank you for having me back. It's Thank been a year since show. we did like our last show. Well, I think about just right at it. And that's the point of this show, huh? Yeah, because it's been a year. It's literally been a year. And not a lot of things have changed into 20, 2020, right? Not, not, to, not too much. No, not at all. This is not, it's is not normal. like, it's an ordinary year. It's just your it's regular totally normal. Of the, the mill. Like, you know, it feels like. I've been so it, bored for this year. Ugh. It might as well be 1988. Because you, Lauren, Lauren Michaels, have your 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 Lauren Michaels hair on, and I got the Lauren Michaels. He called it Lauren Michaels. You guys, I got the Lauren Michaels hair. So I yeah, I don't I don't know who Lauren Michaels is. I just made the name up. It just looks like some that's a girl with hair like that wouldn't be named Lauren Michaels. Lauren seems really stuck up and very sure of herself. So you yes, know. sure and rich on point on point. Yeah, yeah, and on point. So besides, before we get into the shitstorm called twenty twenty. I've been uh, wanting to connect with you and getting back on board to the podcast. I took quite a few breaks this year because obviously it's been a dumpster fire for 2020. For like- <laughs> <laughs> you know, there's an emoji for dumpster fires now. <laughs> yes. There's an emoji for that. There, there should be. We should create one. Literally, there is. Apple has it. So like, it's and, and just flames coming out of it, and that'll des- describe 2020. Totally. Yeah, so I took a break uh, quite a few times this year because it's just been so much. It's been overwhelming. And um, as you guys know, you broads know, um, yeah, I'm sure you've been aware of it's been uh, um, uh, overwhelming for you as well. So the last podcast I did, Devin, was with Dr. Judy Bloom, which was in August. And we did a a Zoom podcast just like this. It was Mm -hmm. successful. So I wanted to continue this new vibe that I'm having with just being you know, having people with being a visual, a podcast, so people can still see it, still hear it on the podcast channel, and then right. see on YouTube. So great. Yeah, because we, so we, we are not as connected as we used to be, ironically. I know. I know. And we, with COVID times, we don't see each other at all. I've seen you. I've seen you two or three times. A couple times. We've seen a couple yeah. times. Social yeah, distancing. Uh, yeah, socially distanced, of course. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, it's been, it was great to see Shen Chen. When, when Thank the, you, the you too. That I did get to see you. Yes. So we have so much to talk about. Let's get into it. Um, I it. recently came from um, this amazing trip to Europe. And yes, girl, yes, you guys, I went to Europe, believe it or not. And it was Croatia. And I just came a week ago. I landed last Sunday, last Saturday. And we were on a cruise. It was a land and sea yacht excursion. And this was this was, this was uh, planned last November. So pre-COVID, you know, when everything was normal, you know, when everything, when everybody can go on, on planes and trains and automobiles and not have an issue. <laughs> but we booked this trip last year. I usually book my trips a year in advance so I can plan financially, plan with my work, plan with my family, you know, and just, you know, um, make sure that the time is allotted for to travel, right? So with now, with all the restrictions in the world, I mean, the world still has COVID. It's not just, this, this, is, this is the one thing about, and we're going to get into our politics and everything in a minute. This is one thing that people think it's only in the United States, that COVID is only happening in the United States. Yeah. No, this is a global pandemic. It's a global pandemic. So with that being said, with the travel has come to, went, went to with full on breaks, as you know, right? Back in, in when, when the, um, Restrictions uh, stopped so as to go to Europe, Asia, um, some Lat- Latin countries. We couldn't go for a long time. They're slowly opening up. And Croatia and Turkey, as of now, are still the only two cur- European countries that allow us to go, Americans to go. They have their own EU and they have their own, there's a, a it's called Skogen, 
the Scogin, it's S-C-H-O-G-N, I believe, uh -huh. and all this other type of travel treaties in the, in the countries that allow other people to travel within their countries. Right. But even Europeans have kind of stopped traveling to their two different neighboring countries as well because of COVID. Wow. So we had to do a lot of finagling. I had four flight cancellations. Prior to them going, ramping up to it because they weren't sure if their, the trip was going to happen. Yeah. So they could cancel yeah. It. British they Airways canceled. Yeah. British, British Airways canceled on me. American Airlines canceled on me. Croatia Airlines canceled on me. Delta canceled on me. Girl, it wow. was so stressful. And because they didn't want to go to Croatia. People are scared to go sure. right now. So uh -huh. finally, thank goodness to United Airlines. Woohoo! I'm going to put a you know, hashtag United Airlines. We were able to book United Airlines from LAX to um, Croatia to Zagreb. And we met the group in Zagreb. So it was Croatia to, Frank to Dulles, Washington, Dulles to Frankfurt, Frankfurt to Zagreb. Oh, you're hopping all over Europe. Right, you know, but you know, with 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 Germany, you still it's only you can't really hang out. It's only by connection. Right, exactly. We had a group of thirty-one people in our group, and everybody was so appreciative that we were actually there. We were actually on soil on this amazing, gorgeous um, uh, trip. So I want to share some pictures real quick, and of course, we'll get into what's going on with you. But I want to share these amazing pictures that we when we went to. The Greb. So, I we say, say, say that again and spell it. The Greb. Z A G R E B. Okay. It's one of the um, one of the, I guess it's one of the second or the third largest city in Croatia. Dubrovnik oh. is the big big is the big city, and we'll get and and no, that's Dubrovnik is known for the Game of Thrones. Oh, it is. Yeah, they, Game of Thrones filmed there? a lot. Oh, they did? Oh, wow. they, they filmed a lot in, in, um, um, in Dubrovnik. You weren't into Game of Thrones, weren't you? I don't want to get my, head, my, my house egged or anything. How dare you? How dare you? <laughs> yes. There are, <laughs> there are these epic, iconic episodes that were filmed. Um, I'll show you in a minute. I'll show you in a minute. I saw those. I saw, I saw those episodes. The, oh, you saw, I'll show you which ones I'm talking about. <laughs> I saw the where everybody dies and then where the king gets his head cut off or something. Oh, spoiler alert. I'm sorry if you haven't started them yet. But uh, everybody dies. Okay. Everybody dies. This is the pictures I'm showing you. Can you can you see these? Yeah, they're gorgeous. They're gorgeous. The pictures I'm showing right now are Plitzviki Park. That's actually um, near Zagreb. This was our second day we got there. This park had nothing but waterfalls and green, clear water. Croatia is still one of the top five countries that has the actual drinking water. You can actually drink out of this, out of these lakes and ponds. That's how clean can? it was, yeah. Wow, it, it looks like, yeah. where's, the, where's the unicorns? I know, right? Where's it, the fairies flying around? It's literally, you're waiting for this, this waterfall. This, this, it's, just, it's just, everything looked fake. Right. It looked absolutely fake when we when we were seeing this whole thing. It looks like that place in Maleficent where um, they the, the that park that where all the fairies live, you know. Where all the, the fairies and the woodland jungle woodland creatures would come out and play. Yeah. It maybe this might have been an, an inspiration to that movie. We don't know. Oh, yeah. But everything you saw was so magical and mysterious and mystic, and I'm like. I, I came from Los Angeles and I'm coming to this. I just, I felt like I was in this surreal place. Could it, you be there after dark or is like, get out, you gotta be out by dark. Cause it changes into like monsters and you know, things that you- I wouldn't be surprised. I wouldn't be surprised. Um, uh, for you guys to, if you guys want to check this out, it's called, I don't, and I'm probably butchering the pronunciation of this park. It's Plitzviki or Plitzvitz, Plitzvitzi, Plitzvitzi. P L I T V I C E. And again, it was about a good, I think it was a good hour and a half from Zagreb. We stayed here for a good four to five hours. Okay. We walked about seven and a half miles. Dang. Now, there's something now I was, I forgot to tell you during my trip to Croatia, I found it. I broke my foot. Girl. Right. My I just got that news from you, and I was like, what has is, what is this girl done? I can't go anywhere without having some damn injury. At least there were no needles involved this time. 
Thank God. Right. But I think this was the day I actually broke the foot. Um, let me show you. Well, the foot has a bunch of bones in it too. So, you know, you can, they're, they can be your, delicate. Yeah, your foot's actually quite delicate. Look at this lake. Mm -hmm. Look at this lake. Insanity. Gorgeous. The, this was the view when we first got yeah. there. I'm sure it's freezing cold, but it looks inviting. Oops, that's a wrong picture. Um, thank, goodness, thank goodness there's no porn on this one. Um, <laughs> thank, thank goodness. <laughs> You have to change your rating. <laughs> That's the wrong picture. Um, but um, yeah, I gotta change the rating on the show. Oh, geez. <laughs> now, now everything's out of control. Um, hey, it's all right. Oh, it's a slideshow. Look at yeah, that. Yeah, it was a slideshow, Miss Queenie. You see how I need you back to the show so you can do my editing again? <laughs> yes, I see. <laughs> so, do you see this? this you, you see the lake still? Yeah, did you touch the water by chance? Yes, we touched the water. It was 70 degrees. It was still cool. But unfortunately, this park is so, well, I shouldn't say unfortunately, this park is so clean and so preserved, they don't allow any swimming. Oh, I wouldn't, yeah. Yeah, and uh, so you could imagine, I was just like, oh my God, I would just love to swim in this water. It was just so inviting. Hey, it looks and amazing. It was so clean. I mean, yeah. you can literally see the bottom of the lake. The water was so pristine and clean. Love it. It was so wonderful. Pretty. So this is actually another part of the water. There was actually this this cave. You could say, is that the cave in like cave. Uh, the Brady yeah. Bunch that they go into in Hawaii? <laughs> you find the idol, the troll the doll, whatever. It's that called. was it. That's it. That's it. I mean, look at this right here on the right hand, the the, the corner, the corner of the right hand bottom. That's how clear the water was, Devin. That's insane. And that's rock, right? That's not mud. That's rock. It's, like, it's rock. Yeah, <laughs> that's rock. Yeah. So. <laughs> Imagine seven miles of walking, and you, the whole time I was like this, like getting whiplash every time I'm walking around. I'm like, I cannot believe this is on our planet. It was the most gorgeous scenery I've never, I've ever seen. Good gosh, it looks quite waterfalls just flowing, just flowing. So I'm gonna be flowing. look at look at that. Was it a, you could hear the waterfalls well as well wherever you oh, were? Oh, you you couldn't you couldn't cool. talk. You couldn't talk wow. to anybody. They were so they were roaring so loud. And wow! Mm -hmm. Just like that would be it was a good place insane. to shoot uh, the next Quiet Place movie. <laughs> you know, because they could go by the waterfall in the river and they could talk. Oh my God, that's right! So, the second one's coming out next month, right? I, I, is it? I mean, it's yeah. I mean, it's. I see the billboard that it's supposed to come out in March, and then COVID happened. COVID and happened, and so they obviously postponed everything. You know, they postponed James Bond. They, James Bond now basically is coming out in April now. James Bond was to come in November. Like dropped and like stream for streaming purposes or in the theaters. I don't They're trying know. to save it for theaters. Yeah, they better they better get it together real quick. I don't know if that's <laughs> happening. I know you can rent theaters now out like for private parties, but you have to be screened. There's a screening process and all of that. But well, apparently, I think it's they one one place I saw AMC was offering it for hundred dollars for a certain amount of people. That's what we saw. Mm -hmm. We should totally do that. That should that would be fun. That'd be a good idea. Well. Yeah. Side note, side note. Side note. So just some more pictures of the park that we went to. Um, this is a cop, this is a, a picture of, we stayed in Biograd for two nights, which is about another, it was another an hour and a half or two hours from Pitspeaky, Pitspitse. Again, sorry if I'm butchering this name, but this is where we stayed for two nights before we went to on our cruise. Is this sunrise or set? This sunrise? is sunset. Oh, this is okay. the sunset. That was sunset. So that was a view for my like we, that was a view from a hotel room. Every night was just a majestic type of scenery. I'm telling you. I love boats. Yeah, there were a few nights it did rain. A few days it did rain, but it didn't ruin our good time. It was a very relaxing trip. This is uh, one of the streets that were when we were in Dubrovnik. Wow. It's an aerial view of Dubrovnik. Again, Dubrovnik is a very famous town where um, it's just gorgeous. It's a seaside village that's been around since, you know, medieval times, 1600s. And what is that tower right there? This is, we, this is from a cable view, we went to the cable view. Oh, that's okay. Got it. Got it. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Got it. So we were at a cable view and I was on the top, we were on top of the hill. Okay. Sweet. So you took a gondola up. We took a gondola up. It's gorgeous. And this is our crew on our cruise. This is the beastly, all of us and our crew. And honey, this captain, Captain Nikolai... Were you all up in? Were you all up in that business? Oh, I was up in that business. All up in it. <laughs> I was like the love boat. Sure enough, you're like okay. Be making run. 
It all goes down in Croatia. Yeah. And, uh, you, oh, that's a bad pun because it intends you know, it like stink. <laughs> well, this was, these were all of us here. This is the, um, when we arrived in Zagreb, we took a group picture. This was the crew. The boat was gorgeous. It was called the Adriatic Sun, and he actually owns the boat. It was his family's business. So he has six generations of sailors. And oh, wow. So that's yeah. the Adriatic Sea that you're in. Yeah, the okay. Adriatic Sea. Yep, yeah, exactly. Okay. Um, there was one day that we had to actually turn around one day. We were supposed to go to this other island park. I think it was called Mijlet. It was spelled M-I-L-J-E-T. It was rocking so hard. It was rainy and stormy. We had to go back and stay one more night in um, another, another town, which we weren't even complaining about. It was still gorgeous where we were staying. But it was, it was, there were some rocky moments. There were some rocky moments, too. On the, but this was our, this was our, uh, our crew. And our, the, all the guests here. So it was, we, everybody got along. The crew is all in blue and, in the front there? Is that what was the, that? The crew is the front line there? Yep. The, uh, this was okay. the, the guy in the white shirt was the captain, that's Nikolai. And the other two was the, uh, you know, you ever watch Below Deck on Bravo? Mm -hmm. So these two were like the, the, the deck hands, you know. And then the other, the ladies were all the chefs. I was going to say, where are the cooks? Those are the ones that matter the most. That's the ladies. <laughs> The ladies were the cooks. The ladies oh. were the cooks, yeah. Cool. Good job. They did a good job at, at making sure that we were fed. I mean, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Um, everything was basically up to us, but um, it was just really a magical trip. Um, I was looking, I'm looking for my Dubrovnik picture. Maybe I didn't download those pictures. I don't know. Again. I've always heard that there's not really enough food on those cruises. They don't feed you that well. So oh, they fed us well. They fed us well. I'm joking. They fed us really, really well. Oops. Like. You can't, I don't have any porn. so much food on those big, big, big cruise ships. There's like so much food. It's insane. There's so much food. Oh there's God. so much food. I gain weight when I go on a cruise. Yeah. So I don't have any other pictures. I guess I down, I didn't download the rest, but um, I, there was pictures where we were, there's these stairs again, part of Debovin and Game of Thrones. There's, if you, when you guys watch the show, Circe, there is this, the famous epics um, scene where Circe, she's like the, the villain of the show. And she gets her due and she goes, she goes down and walks down these steps, these epic steps naked through the town. And what happened that the whole city was able to be invited to be cast members of this episode. Oh, cool. And they all dressed up in whatever the garb was for the Game of Thrones. So Cersei walks down, she was full on naked in real life, like full on naked in front of all these people. And there's this woman who's a high priest, priestess and she holds a bell that says, shame! Shame, shame. You can watch it on YouTube. I'm sure that shows you the episodes on YouTube. But the famous Dubrovnik stairs where Cersei walks down and gets shamed. She gets pellet with vegetables and people are spitting on her in the scene. Oh, this is an epic scene. Epic scene. And you were there. Yeah, and I was there. It was wonderful. You're like Brian Williams. You were there. <laughs> so yeah. I highly recommend, well, right now the season's closed because now Croatia is getting cold. And so they don't really want to, they're not getting any type of visitors right now, but they are allowing us to come there. They were so grateful. We were, we were on the news channels. I was interviewing. I was gonna say, tell us about that. You, I was gonna do yeah. a movie then and get that we out. Sailed of we yeah. sailed into Dubrovnik. We sailed into Dubrovnik that day and all of a sudden all these news channels and cameras were outside waiting for us to, re, to uh, arrive. And I was interviewed three times through, um, through three different um, Croatian news channels because we were the first Americans since the country cut, shut down in July to visit there. So not only are you famous in the United States, you're also now famous in Croatia. I'm obviously. famous in Croatia. Yep. Obviously. Yep. <laughs> and I posted the uh, news rule in the Abroad Productions fan base group. So if you guys are following us on Abroad Productions fan group page, you can take a look at the link there. So follow us there. So That's awesome. it was a vacation. Yeah, it was a really, really good vacation. And I got a broken foot on Monday. I go to tomorrow, which is Monday. We're in this, by the way, you guys, on Sunday. Um, I go to get an MRI to cancel out surgery. Right. So send me some. Cancel. What? What? To cancel out? To cancel out. We don't. I don't want surgery. Yeah, we want to confirm. There is two. The two broken bones. The MRI is going to confirm that because we just did X-rays. Right. So the MRI is going to confirm where the bones are and if okay. they are a hairline fracture or some sort of. You probably don't need surgery. The feet are thing. Damn surgery. Uh, feet are a funny thing, and then they usually heal. Okay. Yeah, I don't want it. But I do want to see what the doctor says. And our, my foot doctor is amazing. So I had foot surgery 10 years ago. I don't want another foot surgery. Oh, but you don't. 
No, I don't. So can I ask you about the, uh, well, I don't want to control the show, uh, but I know we we're going to talk about COVID, but I did, I wanted to talk about COVID and the uh, aspect of traveling for you. How did it, how did all that go? Because I, I think people, you know, want to know, like, yeah. you're probably the first person that I've known that traveled, that has traveled extensively internationally during these times. So yeah, what was the process? Process is with Croatia, every country as right now, which they duly need to have their own restrictions. COVID, and you can find this on the, um, the customs, I think it's the customsgov.com website where it shows all the immigration issues of, around the world in any country. Just type in a country you want to go to. And all you do is Google, I want to go to Jamaica and see what their COVID restrictions are. Croatia had a 48 hour rule. So we had to do a test, a PCR rapid test within 48 hours before we land. We have to have it before we land. land. My flight was Tuesday, October 6th. We arrived the next day because you lose the next, you lose a day of traveling. I had mm -hmm. to test Monday morning. Because my wow. flight was Monday, was Tuesday morning. So you have to have the flight, you have to have the results 48 hours emailed to you and you have to show immigration. So I got it within 24 hours or less actually. So I still was home. I was able to print it up on my printer and show them in paper. Now, everybody had different experiences when they went to their immigration desk in Croatia. Some people said, oh, okay, thanks. Some people didn't even look at it. Really? Yeah. And people huh. spent so much money because I spent $225 for a rapid PCR test because I wanted right. to guarantee I was going to have the results within 24 to 48 hours. Uh -huh. I went to all these free testings, but it uh -huh. didn't guarantee you get it in time. So I didn't want to right take that risk. You know, some like there's quite a, you know, the forum has free testing. You went to the forum, right? Or Dodger Stadium? Dodger Stadium, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah and that was yeah. free, right? It was free. When did you get, re when did you get re results? It was, a, it took a few days. Yeah. It wasn't so 48 hours. It was probably 72 you know, hours. 72 or, or yeah. Yeah. So we mm -hmm. couldn't risk it for the biscuit. I wanted to make sure I got the results in time. So you pay for that convenience knowing that you're going to get results within the 24, 48 hour allotment. Okay, interesting. I want to be in COVID jail. <laughs> or yeah, or sent back yeah. or whatever, whatever. You know, if yeah. you had, if I had positive results and, and it showed, and I had to show the immigration people, I would have had to stay in Croatia for 14 days in the same hotel on my own expense. That's the gamble. That's the gamble that you take when you travel abroad now, is that if you have a positive test, you have to stay quarantined for 14 days in that country your expense. Oh, I wouldn't but, be able to leave. Yeah, yeah. That, would, that would have been my luck, probably. I would just yeah. Okay, I'm gonna hang been, out I'd, for two weeks. Get broke. Go broke. Pay in this hotel room. Okay. Go back home. <laughs> and go back home and not be able to see you. And then we were in Zagreb. Zagreb's not that you know big of a of a city, so I wouldn't be able to even leave my. I don't know if I'd even be able to leave my hotel. Like I've right. been so many restrictions that people are really strict in certain countries that they actually monitor, make sure you don't leave your hotel room. Tell me about the planes. They looked positive empty. results. What? Uh, tell me about the plane. It, they, they looked empty. Oh. Girl, you know what? I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to say this. Um, don't be that scared and flying. These planes are so immaculate now and so clean. Um, the planes are empty. The airports are empty. LAX looks like a ghost town. Does it? Dallas, Washington, one of the biggest hubs in America, Dallas, Washington, D.C. airport, empty. Empty. You're just walking like you're just, you're walking in a tunnel. Like there is nobody there. If they were masked up too. So you got to imagine I had to wear masks for 14 hours. Yeah. LA to Dallas, Dallas to Frankfurt, Frankfurt to Zagreb. Zagreb, I mean, Frankfurt, scarce. No one in the airport. These are major airports. Nobody there. Yeah. You so, took a photo of one of the places. I think it was in, it was probably in Croatia. It was, uh, yeah, it was Croatia. It was uh, um, in Dubrovnik. We were there. It was like five people were in the airport. It literally looked like. Me and the employees. The Walking Dead or something. There was nobody, there. nothing. So I'm going to encourage you guys, this is probably the safest time to fly. The yeah. safest time to fly. Um, there was an article I posted in the Facebook 
page as well as the CEO of Delta um, showed some statistics. Statistics: There's been 1 billion people flying this year. There was only 44 corona cases positive out of 1 billion people. Wow. Flying still is one of the most safest ways right now. So if you guys can travel to a place that's allowing you to travel, take advantage of it. You're going to be messed up. You know, I write, you know, you showed me the video of um, Naomi Campbell. Naomi Campbell. And this was what, two years ago, she, she's known for being very meticulous in her traveling. She wipes down the seats. She wears um, like a, a hazmat suit. Basically, yes. <laughs> she's amazing. This is like two years pre-COVID. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Um, she wears a hazmat suit. She has a blanket for the chair. She wipes down everything. She wipes down the seats and everything. She did this two years ago pre-COVID. Yeah. I did the same thing. I wear a hazmat suit. <laughs> I wiped down everything with my wipes and everything. And then I was comfortable. I flew business class. And I yeah. didn't have to find business class. But there was hardly anybody playing that was sitting next to me on all those flights. Um, that looks amazing. It's so nice. And they're actually, they're actually your board. I bet. There. Economy, nobody was in the economy seats. Yeah, it, look, it looks so apocalyptic. Post -apocalyptic. It, it does look apocalyptic. It, uh -huh. It's something that we never have experienced in our life. We were flying 787s, Boeing 787s. Huge planes. Those are huge. Those, those, those planes fit 300 people. We had maybe 50 people on the plane. That's insane. <laughs> That's crazy. I would encourage you guys, this is the safest time to fly. The safest time to fly. Okay. And you get good, you get good Who's got to book their tickets? Let's go. I'm ready. I'm, I'm ready. ready to go. I'm, I'm ready to get out of something. I'm supposed to go to Mexico um, for Thanksgiving. And there's another trip I don't want to announce yet, but that's gonna, another big one coming up. And the country just um, reduced their restrictions. Oh, they did. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like, you should play the, uh, the Jeopardy. Uh, music under this to see who can guess. <laughs> do, 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 do. What so, is, um, I don't know. So it's been a week since I've been home and I've been dealing mm -hmm. with jet lag, but not the kind of jet lag that I usually have with Europe. I actually have been sleeping so much sounder this week. Oh, good. Um, yeah. And, and because I'm, also, I'm not going anywhere and I'm trying to nurse this leg, this foot. Right. And um, taking it easy. So um, the jet lag is not the best, but I'm glad I'm home. Nothing beats home. Uh, huh? Nothing beats home. Nothing beats home. And, but you don't like idling. So I know, I, know. I know. I know that's hard for you. It's hard for me too. So this has been like a challenge, but yeah. Yeah. And I also wanted to quarantine myself anyway. I took a test already. I took a test on Tuesday. Mm -hmm. I was negative still and I'm negative. And that was in, I did that. I did the free one and I got the results on Thursday. So, and I want to go see my parents. I haven't seen my parents in like um, almost two months. So I wanted to make sure I was negative before I go see my parents. But um, no symptoms. I feel great. And again, thank you, Croatia. Thank you, Adriatic Sun. You know, thank you for the whole trip. It was an amazing trip. So I highly, guys, I highly recommend traveling. You're going to put all that out, information out there and, and yes. the links? Like that. Yes, absolutely. Maybe I can get them to uh, sponsor me. Yay. Amazing. Yeah, you need that. So that's what's going on with me. So let's get into Devin. <laughs> Everybody's been asking me what's going on with your uh, your your sidekick, you know Edward Carr. We called you. We kept the name as Edward Carr, but uh -huh. now we found it was Devin. And what's been going on with you, Devin, in the last year? You've had a lot of stuff happening. Yeah, I had a lot. I've had a lot of stuff happening. Um, yeah, I mean, we stopped the show. We, um, you know, together doing the show together. Um, I guess that was in November, last November, right? That was our anniversary, anniversary show. Anniversary show. Uh, let's see here. So just a quick timeline, because I think everybody's had quite, quite, quite a year, because 2020 has not been nice to anyone. Mm -hmm. uh, and I don't want to go dark here, but it's just, this is what's happened. But my mom passed away on January, 20, uh, January 13th of 2020, just at the very beginning of the year. And, um, you know, prior to that, you know, Christmas Day, actually, when I was at home in Texas, Christmas Day, she went downhill and so we had to put her into a you know uh, a nursing home or a um, rehab facility which was actually um what do you call it hospice and so yes. 
they were going to hospice, you have two, two, two paths, right? You get, get you better or, you know, make you comfortable. Make you comfortable. And so they were, she was getting better. And so I was there for the holidays. And then I came back to um, Los Angeles on the uh, December the 30th, I believe it was. And by the 8th, I had to go home again because she had taken a turn for the worse. And so unfortunately, she passed away on January 13th. And, um, you know, before everything got, got crazy in the world, you know, literally the world has not been the same since she, she left. And, you know, I, my mom was a lot of things to me, but if she taught me any, anything, she, she taught me how to always be on time or, you know, it's all about <laughs> timing, you know, in life, things, mm-hmm. are, things happen at the right time and the right reason. You might not always know why they happen, but sometimes later they make sense. And, you know, the only way that we were able to, you know, have comfort and make sense of her passing was this pandemic that hit us, you know, not even two months. It was already hitting at that time. But, uh, you know, the country shut down, I think, around March, March the 13th, about two, two months after she had passed away. And, uh, you know, I, I was going through my, my grieving process and, you know, just, I, I, you know, anybody that's lost a loved one or a, a parent, uh, I'm sure all goes through this, but it's just like, yes. I knew I needed, uh, you know, some type of, type of uh, therapy, meaning yes. uh, grief, you know, grief counseling. Yes. And I was looking into that, but, I, you know, COVID hit and, you know, it just, it felt, it feels like I never really got to, to deal with her death. And so, you know, it, because you had to, we had to adjust to this new life all of a sudden and new yeah. challenges and you did grieve, but you don't think you grieved properly for your mother? What- yeah, I, I just, and I don't know what that means. I'm just saying, I feel like that there are things that people can do to honor one's death, um, but I'm not really sure what that is. And being locked up in a home for six months or more now, it isn't, I don't think the right way to do it, but no. um, I don't know. It's, it's just something that weighs on me. I have my great days and my, you know, bad days about, you know, my feelings about losing her, but she does, uh, she does come around in yeah. her own, her own way, I think. Um, well, I so, want to say, I, I know that you loved your mother. I'm so sorry about your loss. That's, yeah. I know I was, I was devastated for you when you told me um, in January. Um, but actually you, I was, you know, when you said she was falling down um, or she was, her health was decreasing in, in December. It was kind of like, this was basically it, huh? You kind of knew. Yeah, I know. Yeah, we knew. And that was during the holidays, which is going to suck because, you know, I hate to, I hate to bring any type of mojo, but it might, it's going to come around where you're going to get hurt again when the yeah. Christmas and New Year's comes up, you know? Yeah. It's coming up. I know it's going to be a reminder, but you need to call Miss Dr. Judy Bloom. Yeah, I know. I might need to, to reach out to her because yeah. I can't see. I, at least she's someone that I, I know and can, you can talk yes, to. Yes, you can I, talk to I, her. I just find it weird to like talk to anybody that you don't know face to face and 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 this time, but that's that's what I, what I need to do. Yeah. But, uh, well, I'm very sorry for your loss. It's not been fun and it's never, I know nobody's had a great year, but it's just been, you add, you layer that into it. It's been a, a rough time. And mm-hmm. I, you know, it's like, I try to be there for my brother and my sister too. And I, cause I know that they need to talk and, you know, we're not the best communicators in our family, but you mm-hmm. know, I try to, I try to, yeah. and, uh, you know, it's just hard being further, further away from them. Yeah, and of course. Connected with them. But in the, <clears throat> in the middle of all this, I, I, I did switch jobs. Um, in May, I went to a new company. A big so, company. A big company. A kind of, a kind of and, big company. We, we can't say the name of it, unfortunately. Yeah, you you know my name now, so you can look me up and look. I don't I don't want to cross. You don't want to say it on here, but yeah. y'all, you got an amazing opportunity at this great, very, great very job. Tech so, company. Yes. Congratulations. Uh, thank you. Thank you very much. So that's that's been a, a wonderful experience, but it's been an experience that I have worked with the company for almost six months now, and I have never met anybody that I work with. It's all done this way. We work, meet. We you meet. haven't physically met anybody yet. You haven't shaked a hand or gave a hug to anybody. No. Wow. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, fortunately, there are some people—not that I work directly with, but maybe a few—that 
that I have known from other my other comp, uh, jobs, you know. So we all it's entertainment industry. So it's quite a small business at the end of the day because everybody knows each other. So yeah, there's there's comfort in that dealing with people that you know that you have worked with before or worked with externally before. Yeah, and so there's that there's that familiarity. But there's though it's such a crazy weird task to understand and how to nuance with people that you've never met before in person. Will you um, be going to an where where you actually going to go working at an office or is this going to be status quo for the next year or so? Uh, they are, there are phases of sort of returning to work, but um, it hasn't been announced to us yet if, if that's going to be, if we're going to be involved in it. And I think, okay. I mean, I don't know, but seems like the industry is saying like it's if people do return to the offices it's just going to be on a if you need to be in the office basis if you right? really need to be this is this is going to change commercial real estate this is changing commercial real estate for sure because why do we need to spend why does a company need to spend tens of thousand dollars a month on rent when we've found out that people working from home actually is working better and produ- and being more productive than anything you yeah. know assumption of oh we can't have all these people from home they can't concentrate they won't be able to be productive. Well, the terms, the 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 proxy has changed. The expert has changed. Confirmed that people are productive when they work from home. They get things done because they they want to enjoy their life at home instead of being in front of a computer all day. And that's yeah. changing how people are doing of you know signing new leases, business leases. You know, from Universal to Warner Brothers to Netflix, all the people are working from home. You know, our friend Lori, she, Lori, they, that she, they, they don't even need to be back to work. They don't have a, they don't have a, it's indefinite. They can stay working from home. That's yeah. Uh, she's with Warner Brothers or uh, uh, Universal. Universal. Um, yeah. And, and that's, that's kind of this, what's being floated right now. I yeah. just kind of wait, wait and see, see what happens. But yeah, I'm productive, but it's, it's interesting too. Cause I, I, my partner is now like a uh, coworker, you know? It's like you see him every day, a teacher, <laughs> and so you know we certainly have to juggle our uh, office to be able to meet the needs of you know our schedules because there are calls that I have to be on that are they're private and uh, nobody can hear and you know all that stuff. But um, and but he's teaching grammar every day, you know. He's and, a high school teacher. Yeah, he's a high school teacher, and so I, I'm getting a, a good grammar refresher. I'm getting a good. Huck Finn refresher, you know, I'm getting all these literature uh, refreshers that I haven't, you know, had in a, a very long time. And uh, so that's kind of, it's kind of interesting in that, in that respect. But yeah, we're, we've, I think we've finally kind of found our groove on how to like deal with the spaces because uh, the, we got new internet, internet uh, as I was just telling you at the, at the, before we started recording um, just yesterday. And because our AT&T, we only had 50 or something, whatever the measurement is. I have five AT&T, five MIPS or five MPS or six. It's awful in my neighborhood. I need awful. I'm surprised I'm okay. here right now. <laughs> wow. Okay. So then, it's listen, a nightmare. Listen. You we hear have, the AT&T? We have two roommates as well. So, you know, oh, that's right. Traveling up, you know, our internet. So there's four people on it, fifth, splitting it up 50 ways. And that means it's, if you're on your, your phone and your computer and the TV's going, it's just... And your iPad. You know, yeah. Yeah. And so you want to watch Netflix or something. It. Yeah. So we switched yeah. to uh, Spectrum yesterday. And I think it's, I could be wrong on this number, but it's to either 200 or 4P, 400, whatever it is, MP, whatever you said. MPS, so, something like that. MPS. The speed. Okay. Yeah. The speed is much, much better. So hopefully... I mean, tomorrow's the work week starts the work week. So we'll see if, cause he's, he's, he has 23 kids or 23, five kids on zoom at a time. So he has a harder time than I do on. Yes. Our, we use uh, WebEx, but he uses zoom. And so you so, guys had to, you had to barrel down with you and your roommates and say, we need to pay more and get a better internet speed. Yes. And you, I did order another, him being a another teacher. router to drop in the other, other places in the, in the house. All right. Too. Well, so. hopefully AT and T and Spectrum is listening to this podcast, and so we'll get some. Hopefully so. AT and T, get your crap together. You're losing clients. During Do you know? Okay, so and this is a pitch just to Spectrum. So far, I you know the service seems fine so far, but just but for the customer service, I'll pitch that. Okay. Okay. So we called AT and T first of all to figure out what was going on. You can pull it up on your your account online, and. Uh, 
they were saying we had 75 of whatever it was in it and on the screen we're like no we have 50 and the woman was like no you have 75 and we're like no we have 50. <laughs> and then it got disconnected <laughs> like and two hours later they call you back and then so Danny I, 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 I have I have spectrum as cable they're fine with cable they've always been fine with my cable but spectrum? I'm hearing so many mixed reviews on the internet service internet providing them providing the internet and people have been like some people have been yay some people have been like this Okay, well then, uh, I will definitely need a, a more than a day to give you a good. Please answer, let me know. It, so far, so good. But okay. to speak to the service side of it, we were decided to just you know after AT and T gave us all this bad information and we were paying a lot for hardly anything. Right. Uh, we we're like, let's just let's just try it out. What's it gonna hurt? So right. We got we they they did this. I don't know if if Juliet did it or uh, Danny did it. Self elected to like install it. I'm like, I can't do that. I don't know anything about any of that stuff. I'm not gonna touch it. So Danny got it together on Friday, was it Friday night, I think? Got it all, everything connected, but it wouldn't work because the technicians still had to come out and shut the other lines off and turn the other line, their, their service on. So he came out yesterday morning. And so Friday night, Danny got the Spectrum people on the phone and was able to have get, get somebody on the phone within five minutes. They confirmed that their technician would be here yesterday. They came out. Paul was his name, came through, did his stuff, and got everything hooked up in a matter of no time and was okay. Everything All right, I'm going to call you literally two weeks from now and see how okay. it is because I have to change services. 18 okay. is just so. <laughs> Sorry, anything else in terms of, so by the, by the way, again, we, we can't tell the company you're working for right now because you have to, you have a, you know, your NDAs and all this other stuff, but you are an executive player. You are an exec in an executive role. Can you give us a hint of what you're doing in terms of projects? Not the name uh, of projects, but what exactly is your, what is your role? I, I, okay, so I work in legal and studio affairs. So um, on, a, on a, in a production basis. So it's a, it's a, it's a, an operation. Let's just say it's an operational role for, okay. for a studio. Are you enjoying it? I love it. You love it? Yeah, I do, I do love it. It's uh, it's very entrepreneurial, and it kind of combines a lot of the things that I've ever done in my life into this one role, which mm -hmm. means sort of figuring things out, how do things work, how are things mm -hmm. going to operate, um, how are things, how are we, how are we going to communicate with different divisions on how to like put things together and make them work smoothly. Uh, yeah, so it, it it plays to a lot of my my strengths, and so yeah. I am enjoying it so far. Yeah. And, it's been the, the biggest challenge has been understanding how to maneuver the an ecosystem in such a large company because uh, there's different. The last I worked in a law firm last, and it was 25 people or so, so it's a little bit different. Yeah. Well, congratulations. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. I'm glad you have the position that because it's been a it's been a while since you've been happy working at a certain company and finding your niche. Yeah. Um, you know, because I, I went back and I got that's an MBA. And I was That's a plus for 2020. Yes, thank you. I went back and got that MBA, as you know, like four years, finished like four yeah. years ago. And I was just like trying to figure out the best way to, to use it. And, you know, I think it finds you. You, don't, you can't ever find something in life. Some people get lucky and do find it. But I think the right course eventually finds you. And I feel like this yeah. is right. Yeah. For Good me. for you. Good for yeah. you. That's a sparkling star we have to put in for 2020 for you. For sure. So let's talk about some stuff that you and I in our generation have never dealt with is this COVID pandemic. Our parents never even dealt with something that, that is happening right now. Mm -hmm. And you know, everyone, and everyone wants to, they're like, oh, they're over COVID. I'm over COVID, you're over COVID, we're over this pandemic. But a lot of things have transpired since uh, you and I have been on the show. And one thing is this, the racial in inequity in terms of awareness of the racial inequity in our country. Mm -hmm. uh, we've had, um, three substantial situations when it comes to um, police brutality in our country from Ahmaud Aubrey, who was killed by two white supremacists. One was a detective um, and I believe that was in Georgia and he was just jogging in their neighborhood and he was attacked and murdered. Uh, Brianna Taylor uh, in Louise, uh, Louisville, Kentucky, right? Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if it was Louisville, but it was, it was Kentucky, I believe. It was Louisville. It was, okay. 
So she was murdered in her home by four or five cops who came in shooting, booting, tooting, shooting in her apartment while she was sleeping. Um, and um, so she was murdered unjustly. And then we have the famous George Lloyd case that happened in May, um, who he was um, attacked um, and arrested and then um, murdered in front of um, everyone. Um, by a cop who pressed on his neck with his knee and actually choked and suffocated on camera. Um, I think that's the day the world yeah. changed. Was it? The day the world changed. This was, the, was the day, United, yeah, that was the day the world changed. The day the United States changed. It was. Yeah. It was well, I don't know if it's changed, it's, but it definitely right, made, right. you know, Rodney King, 1982, when we had the riots back in 1982 with Rodney King, he was, he's still alive to tell a story even though in that, that video was also televised and that, and that it changed the world supposed to be at that time over 30 years ago um, or 28 years ago. But has it really changed? Because obviously we would, if it did change, Devin, we wouldn't have had these issues with three black people being unjustly murdered. You know, um, this, is, this was a time of Black Lives Matter that had a voice, more of a voice than anything. And with this controversial stance, um, we've had th a lot of support um, in terms of the worldwide, you know, standing against police brutality. We've had, you saw the marches, and unprecedented amounts of people marching during a pandemic, wearing their masks, and, but expressing the, you know, the realization that this has to change. The system, systemic racism has to change. Um, police brutality against people of color has to be eradicated. Um, I, I'm not for the word defunding the police. I'm definitely for the word for reforming the police, yeah. you know, uh, tr more training, more at diversity training, um, d d combat training and how to tackle somebody instead of choking them to death. Um, Cultural training, changing or training is, 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 is important too, because absolutely, I, I don't know why you would send Whitey McWhiterson into a neighborhood that knows nothing about a culture to uh, understand how to deescalate something and it's my understanding that wasn't even escalated. That guy was just, you know, freaked out by having, I think two, at least two of them were white. One, one of them was uh, an Asian gentleman, I believe, but- It was four it was, cops. It was, it was four, four cops. Is it three, three white, three white? And three white one. and one Asian. And mm -hmm. it showed that he, they, the, the, the store owner thought that, that George Lloyd had a $20 Confederate bill. Yeah, right. Did that still justify the tackling of this man? No, not at all. Not, it had not, cameras before he was tackled, you know, and, and sh sh you know, shoved against the wall, shoved against the, ca the car, tackled, and then choked to death. Does that still justify? He had $20. I probably have had a $20 Confederate bill. bill. And didn't know it. It's Confederate. Right. You know, do I deserve to be treated that way? You know? No, 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 because so, normally you don't know that you got that. that exactly. Um, exactly. I, I certainly wouldn't know it. I don't hold mine up to the light and check. I don't either. Whatever. Um, I but you know, I think cultural tra training for the police department is a, is a big, big thing that should happen, and you yes. know, sending the right people into the right neighborhoods to deal with the, those situations. And you know, and I understand that it's like you can't schedule, like, hey, if you're all, that person's on you're like sleeping right now, and then wake them up and get going. I I understand the matrix of how something could you know not be sending the right person. Certainly, I know that. But so then train them all to understand oh. mentally how to deal with these situations. And yes, require yes. more money. So and higher defund. Let's let's fund them more and give them more training. And let's give them more training. I mean I, I understand the word defund doesn't mean taking money away from the police departments, but it means putting more money into the social uh, activities, social directives, um, neighborhood programs, social workers. I understand that and I and I'm for that. But these police departments are are flooded with money. They're flooded with money. They have the amazing, you know, they have the best um, unions, the best insurances, the best benefits that anybody could ever get. You get paid. They're over flooded, and and police deserve to be paid well. Our, yeah, their it asses is. out there in public. There are crazy people out there. There are people who are very are evil, and they need to be in jail. But there's a way to handle either someone who has a mental illness, if they have, if they have, if they have, uh, they're socially, they're mentally sick. Um, um, there's 
there was a couple of cases this year that this 13 year old autistic child was killed. Um, white kid killed by cops. Um, he was running away from them and the cops shot him 20 times. It, it was just really, you know, to, ask questions. Ask I have to ask you something because uh, it just, I, I, can't, it, I can't explain the, I don't want to say it's a rage, but I want to say it's just a, a bad emotion that I have that I feel when I see people saying, uh, well, all, all lives matter, or well, white lives matter too, or, you know, why, black lives matter is, is racist. And, and it's all white people saying this. Of course and I'm like, is. how, what, what does it, do you have at least one black friend that you can ask and tell that to and see what they say? It's not a matter of like, all the other lives don't matter. It's a matter of just understanding black people are tired of, tired of effing getting killed by driving their car, getting stopped at a stoplight. Being, that's, that's it. That's all black lives. Being attacked by a Karen. You know, Karen Being has been- attacked by a Karen because of their skin color. Because of this, because of this. Because of all, my skin is darker than your skin, Devin. So I'm going to be questioned where I'm in the shop, where I'm going to be questioned when I'm going to go buy a car, want to buy a house. I'm getting the double look. If I was white, I wouldn't be getting the double look. That's why Black Lives Matter. It's Black Lives Matter too. We matter also, okay? There are things that we call white privilege. White privilege is a thing. If people, white, white people don't woman, understand that. They don't. Yeah, they don't, and I don't like, they, how do you not understand it? Because they don't know what it's different. You know, the book White Fragility has been the top seller since this all happened. I, I still have to read it. Guys get, it's an author, uh, what's his name? It's called Right Fragility. It was a very, it's a very popular book right now that everybody's been getting and reading. One of my friends actually talked about it um, this weekend. She called me up and she actually, she actually apologized to me about things. We weren't talking for a while. And she actually said, Shannon, I really want to apologize by my behavior that I've had to you the last two or three years. Um, and she, she wanted to apologize to me because she read this book. And um, it's by Robin D'Angelo, White Fragility, mm -hmm. Why It's So Hard for White People to Talk About Racism. Mm -hmm. I really recommend you guys read it. It's a, yeah. 2018, so before all this happened. Mm -hmm. And um, a lot of my white friends are reading that book because they want to know the levels of, of how they should react to things, how we react. Uh -huh. we, 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 I, I, I'm very privileged as well. I come from a family that's very diverse as well. All my friends, 95% of my friends, we've talked about this on the podcast many times. A lot of white, Hispanic, Asian, Latino. Um, I have very few black friends, but I'm also a black woman. So I have dealt with discrimination. I've dealt with people treating me differently because I am a black woman. And I've noticed that when I have voiced that um, situation, some of my white friends go like, well, ooh, will you maybe be an overactive, Shannon? Really? Would you act that same way if someone acted the same, did the same thing to you? No, white you know, privilege. That it hasn't finest. happened to you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, so the right fragility issue is is is, is real. And I I marched a few times during the, the BLMs this year during the COVID time. I have a mask up. I actually was out there in Hollywood Boulevard. I was out there in Beverly Hills. We we're out there in Crenshaw District. We we're out there at UC US, USC this year marching. There are times where I would just go out and help clean the streets at four or five, five o'clock, six o'clock in the morning when there were some riots happening. Um, Queen Shen Shen is the water. Real deal. She, she get she, she does it. She, yes. is, really, she is no joke. She I can't be a, a keyboard warrior and be all, Ooh, I hate this and bad Trump and da da da. You have to be an activist. You have to be out there. Yes. It's a pandemic. And yes. It's different situations. But it was all, I masked up and still out, out there and fought for what I think. What I she think. was out, okay, I, I'm gonna dovetail this into something real quick because um, you know, but I'll tell the, the, the audience that I had a, um, I had an emergency appendix, uh, appendix yes. appendectomy, I guess I can't get my words this morning. Yes. Um, appendectomy on March the 30th, okay? I'm, I'm sorry, May 30th, <clears throat> and that was, I think the, the riot started, the, I got out of the hospital the next day, the 31st, and that's that evening. And that's when the riots in Los Angeles started. 
And they literally started in my backyard, like on <laughs> Fairfax. I live in the Fairfax district and they literally- the That's when things were going out of control. They were peaceful protests, but unfortunately, uh-huh. Dumb dums and idiots took it to a whole different level. It went, it went haywire, and they started, you know, protesting, in a in a bad way, you know. Right. And it got later. It got really bad. Yeah. So, yeah. <sighs> I started my recovery from this surgery, pretty major surgery, I guess, under that, and we. <laughs> Yeah, I grew up in Texas and, you know, with guns and all that stuff. And I don't actually have guns in California, but I had frying pans and knives. And I'm like high on morphine or whatever. Coding. Frying pans and coding. knives. <laughs> I was like, Danny, we got to put pan. Just like, just arm the room with whatever you can find just in case. And I don't think they're not, they're not robbing people or anything like that. They're doing businesses, <laughs> but we got to be safe. And so that was- Yeah, you live that. right in, you lived it right in the thick of it. Yeah. So they, they, I, in the backyard, so, not yeah, in my, like, West yard, LA. Yeah, but there's a, there's a, a you know, Cove, uh, uh, Tyler, the creator's store is right in the back of my, that's my right. apartment here. And his, he has a parking lot there and the, the cops, uh, actually they mobilized there and yes, did, you know, helicopters did everywhere. everywhere, everything. It was so insane. And I, sorry, I just lost my chain of thought and how I was dovetailing into something here and lost my train of thought, <laughs> but <laughs> Just know that. That's what happened. I'll three sure weeks. Happened. It was three weeks of hell in Los Angeles. And I know New York, <laughs> Seattle, San Francisco, like the whole United States was a whole a hot mess for at least a good month of June. And in some mm-hmm. the world as well. Um, we got, you know, lots of things were damaged here. Businesses looted here in Los Angeles. I had, we had army tanks a half a mile from my house. I remember that whole three weeks. A night didn't go through. A night didn't go by without hearing helicopters in your neighborhood. A night That's right. didn't go by without it, it hearing didn't. ambulance, it like fire, yeah, police sirens every day. Every day you're hearing that. I felt like we were in. Yeah, you felt like we were in Baghdad. I felt like we were in a war zone. It was horrible. It was horrible. Thank God we have police. I'm not backing down police. I'm not putting down police. We just want y'all to treat us like. John Smith getting arrested. If John Smith is out there acting a fool, do you put him in a chokehold and stamp his neck to death? That's what it is. That's basically it is. Black Lives Matter too. That's what we're just saying. If y'all going to treat John Smith acting a fool and running around naked, are you going to shoot him immediately? Or are you going to put rubber bullets in his ass or tase him? You don't do that to us. We just want fair. We just want. We just want everything fair. That's all. You know that seventeen-year-old kid and um, where uh, in Wisconsin? Where was it? Um, Wisconsin. You know the riots there, and he shot. He shot three people, murdered three people that night, and just he was able to have a gun like a like a wet, like weapon of. I don't know what they are rifles. I don't know what they are. But written, uh, written Wolf. What was his name? Written. Yeah, that kid. He was a kid. Uh, seventeen-year-old went from Indiana to Haven't Wisconsin. Heard of it. Anything, yeah, Indiana. Exactly. Mm-hmm. I haven't heard anything about it. He's in jail, but he has about five hundred thousand dollars that was raised in his name, by the way, to help with legal fees. It wasn't a GoFundMe; it was some church. It was some Christian group that raised over five hundred thousand dollars to help with his um, legal fees. Wow, that's how nuts our country is right now. They're going to praise mm-hmm. the seventeen-year-old kid who killed killed just not maimed, killed three people. Um, and his mother was praised and his dad was praised. And they're all freaking ghetto. It's so, ugh. Um, that's our country. That's what we live in. You, that's you, our country. And that's just, I mean, that's old news. There's like things that are happening daily now. I mean, where are we now? 10 days, nine days from an election, I think? Let's talk about it. This election okay. shit show. Okay. <laughs> it is like- a shit show. I will, I will try to remain as PC and as proactive as possible. So I don't know if that's possible. I got to put my, my glasses back on because I'm getting serious now. We're going to get serious. I'm serious. Get serious. Okay. New glasses, um, by the way. I lost my other pair a few weeks ago and I got a new ones. They're cute. They're cute. What are your thoughts? This is, a, well, this is a, again, everything. The word unprecedented is, has been my vocabulary every five minutes this year. Right. We have never seen an election this dirty and this gross in our lifetime, again, my parents' lifetime. Um, that's been televised, social media, so much hate and division. Um, um, the ballots have been questioned. 
the the, the validity the valid, uh, validity of your vote has been questioned. You never has before. I've I've voted ballot mail in ballots. I don't know since I was 18 years old. No issues. Um, we have the um, crazy dump fire, dumpster fire debates. We just had our second debate, our third debate, which was Thursday, which I think Biden did it such a better job. He's so, I, I like Biden because he's so emotional. He talks to the camera. He talks to American people and tells us what he's actually going to do. He's not perfect. There's no such thing as a perfect candidate. You know, mm -hmm. and we got, you know, Trump who's on a whole different wavelength that thinks COVID doesn't exist, even though he had COVID. Well, supposedly, <laughs> supposedly. I I don't know what. I want to see those medical records. Let's see. We can only know if we see the receipts, and those could be forged as well. Who knows? I'm going to do this. I'm giving major side eye to those medical records. That dude did not have no damn COVID. Let's be honest. Yeah. No. I mean, I, I kind of think that too. Yeah. It was only a publicity stunt. Plus, you know, publicity stunt to to get more people to sway and feel sorry for him, and then actually think that COVID really wasn't a big deal. Two hundred and twenty-five thousand people have died. That's a big yeah. deal. That's a big deal. Well, to my surprise, yesterday uh, we ventured out. We had to get a few things for the house, and we had to go to Crate and Barrel to get um, some new stuff, some gla some glasses and you know, drinking wine glasses. Because I can look at a wine glass and it breaks, and so um, <laughs> we had to get some wine some wine glasses that uh, replacing them. And so we went into a Crate and Barrel, and guess what's happening in in Beverly Hills? A Trump rally. I saw yesterday. it. Yesterday. Shoot. I saw it. And so I- In Beverly Hills. Nothing against, nothing against it. Good for those people for like getting out there and exercising their rights and you have the right to do that. That's, that's what we are uh, as a country. But it is, it, I just don't know what the mindset is for people that organize and go to like rallies for, you know, uh, let's face it, a, a famous president. You know, is it, is it, uh, is it supporting a man's causes or is it supporting white uh, privilege? Is it, is it, is it supporting uh, your neighbor because that neighbor's cool and that, that neighbor wants to be like the other neighbor. So therefore they're a Trump fan. I, I, I just want to know what the, the mindset is of people that organize and go to, to these and, and fly these flags that say b no more bullshit on it. Because Trump in 2020, no more bullshit or something, something like that is the slogan. First of all, that's profanity on, on a slogan as this or slogan. And um, why, why would you think that there's no more bullshit when he's nothing but bullshit, like complete bullshit. Like we've never had about a president. We've never had a book about that man that has literally come out lately. He's a he's a fraud. And how many indictments has he had in his administration since 2016? I mean, People have been in jail. Uh huh. Convicted. Convicted. Has there been any indictments, any convictions under Obama administration? There was none. Zero. I don't even think he fired anybody in uh, on. <laughs> You hire somebody and you, you know. Yeah, hired, fired, fired, hired every two months like Trump has done in this certain But I, I didn't want to get into those waters. And it was just like, I just, I just want to know how people can logically, logically back somebody that's so nasty. That's, that's so, so corrupt. corrupt. That's so corrupt and just is not, how do you not see that he's a good, good person? I mean, that he is not a good person. He's still a game show host and he, and he treats this country as such. A game show. I cannot wait, and I'm praying. And I know people are like, "Oh God, they're talking politics." Yeah, I know. Maybe you want to. I know. Sorry, I didn't want to go, go into the. Board. I know we're, not, we're dead. I don't want. We don't usually talk about politics, but this is how it is. We literally have what is it? Nine days before mm -hmm. November third. We don't. We won't probably even know the, the election results on November third because there's so many mail ballots. They said this is the record amount of mail ballots they've ever had histor historically. Over 47 million. Over 47 million mail in ballots have been accounted for. This is not even November 3rd yet. So imagine what's going to happen on November 3rd when people go up and show up in person. And historically, Republicans go and do it in person. They don't person. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it's going to be a different situation when we actually see these final numbers probably a week later. I'm hoping we'll get, you know, they'll do it sooner in terms of results. Right. But this country has been on so much 
edge and anxiety because of this election. It is the most important election I will ever probably deal with in my lifetime, your lifetime. And um, you guys go out there and vote and register. You know, obviously it's too late to register now, but get your mail-in ballots in, go in person, be safe while doing it. A lot of people are having, a lot of states have early voting and it's still happening right now. So Yeah, your early voting is, but re being registered is too late to register. Too late. Yeah. Too late. Was it the 27th here in LA? I don't know. Maybe. Um, was that the, the, the deadline? I don't we know. We don't want to do any uh, disinformation. No, I don't want any, no. God forbid I put no disinformation on this show, but uh, <laughs> yeah, I, I look, I get it. I'm not going to, I have my entire family that I know of probably supports Trump and um, I just, I can't, it just is such a sore spot uh, when we talk and I just get away from it. I just try not to talk about it with them. And um, yeah, I, I, I've voted Republican in the past. Hey, I'm a, I've, I've but you didn't have this kind of candidate in the Republican race. That's the thing. The GOP has completely turned not the GOP that you and I are used to. They were about family values. They were about small government. Completely opposite now with Trump in office. Complete. They want bigger government. What family values? How do you sustain family values when you cheat on your taxes, you cheat on your wives, you tell them to grab them by the P, you tell, you tell um, the Latino Hispanic com uh, community that they're rapists and murderers. You tell black people community that they're sons of bitches. How, how, is, that a, how is that a family friendly president? You know, you're doing everything, absolutely what the Republican platform was like, what you and I had, were used to when we were kids. Why your family voted for Reagan, why your family voted for, for Bush, you know? I presidents if you ask me uh biden is way more of a republican than donald you trump. think so and as far as values go yeah oh yeah values yeah sure yeah 100 trump was not a republican until he started running for office so that's right he was he was a Democrat. i mean you know i think i think biden is very very middle of the road and uh and that and that's why i say more 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 republican than donald trump because i think donald trump has taken the party so far to the right that um i don't know what they are anymore <laughs> well there it's you know have you been watching mt um not mtv the hbo documentary the vow about cults girl i have put it right there Cult mentality, cult mentality. And by the way, you're 100% right. Documentary, that uh, documentary. Let's talk about something fun, entertainment. Okay, yes. You know, yeah, the, the, you guys got to watch The Vow on HBO. It's about the Keith Raniere um, um, multi level marketing company that was called um, ESP. It was Executive Success Program. And uh -huh. it started at this, you know, started as this empowerment, self empowerment to, 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 um, to conquer your fears and to go out in the world and, 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 and grasp your dreams, right? But then it turned out to be something else and more sinister. And there was a cult within a cult, within a cult. Yeah. And it turned out that well, some women were, um, started this private society of sex trafficking and he was sleeping with these particular women and they were branded, like literally branded and, and, and they used a solder to brand his initials in their, by their pelvic region. His initials? It's shocking. Um, yeah. So he's- These are smart people. They are like real smart people that got sucked in. Smart people. Like, Honey, uh, um, the, the, the heiress of Seagram's. Uh-huh. Is this Red. one of the girls? One of the ladies are now in jail, serving they, a six or seven year prison term. They, tip, they typically go after those kind of people because they're, you know, they, they're rich. They're one of the people that could logically think through things. Yes. And I don't know what that yes. means, but I don't know yes. if it's very logical. But I actually, I did a program in the 90s called, uh, it's 1996, I think is when I did the program. It's called Landmark Education. Yes. Yeah. My and it's done it. similar to something like this. Uh, I, I would say take all the good, because there's good things in that, that program, right? That on the vowel that it started good and it just got in deep. You know, it just got weird. It just got weird. Uh, but those programs, all of them, well, at least the one that I, I did, Landmark Education, it, it's kind of, I'd say it's got cult 
mentality. It had a cult feeling too? Yeah, it did. It did. I mean, it taught me a lot of really good things and qualities. Um, it's, it is all leadership program stuff. But if you get too far into it, I think it's maybe a bad thing. But. Well, this is the thing. They called him Vanguard. So they were looking at to him, they were looking to him as their fearless leader. And these women and men were so immersed in his in his philosophies that they began to worship this dude. When you're mm-hmm. worshiping one man, that's a cult. Yeah. Hi. Hi. Yeah. Hi. Hi, Maga. Hi. Hi. And just like the guy says who was documenting everything, he, you know, did you see it? I don't know if you saw the finale last week. He was enraged. He was pissed. He's like, no one joins a cult. No one says, I want to join a cult today. No one says that. Right. True. But you start going to the meetings. You start dealing with the, the, the and, and fantasizing about this cult leader that you, your brain shifts. Your, 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 sense, your sense, your common sense shifts to everything that this leader is telling you without any recourse. Reprogrammed. You're being reprogrammed. Mm-hmm. And as you saw in that season finale, him and his wife, you know, their, their marriage is about to fail. They had some marriage. They had to go into hiding. They had to go into hiding for years. All their stuff was in storage because the, this, uh, this, this, the, this multi-level programming company that Keith Ranieri created were going after them legally. They were threatening mm-hmm. their lives. You guys should watch it. It's, we know it's, about it's this. What other, cult, what other cult is like that? Scientology. Scientology, for sure. You know, and people that go to Trump rallies. <laughs> um, anyway, I digress. What movies are you watching? Oh my God! So, well, what movies? Maybe TV, TV shows. Going I guess to the theater. Uh huh. Miss, we miss going to the theater. Have you done any of the drive-in theaters? Oh, I don't want to. We should totally I, do that. I, I miss having a convertible. I miss my. Uh, this oh is yeah, my you've traditionally had them. This would be per- perfect for that. But I don't, I don't know if you've seen it on Facebook. But Danny and I are watching a horror movie, thriller movie. You're doing horror movies we're every doing, night for we have this Halloween every year. Yeah. Yes, that's Halloween. excellent. So uh, you know they're not necessarily Halloween movies. They're just, they're just more, scary you know, horror thriller movies. And so um, yeah, we the one that we last watched last night was real good. It's called Alone. Alone. I heard about that. Who was in that movie? Okay, so nobody you'd really know. Uh, Al, what's the female's name? Alex? Uh, no, Jules. Jules something. I can't remember what her, her name is. I, I'd never heard of her. But the the guy that plays the uh, the serial killer, I guess you would say, is the is the uh, the bear type uh, character from Ozark first first season. Uh, oh, the gay one, closeted. The gay one, one the one, the closet one. Yeah. Him. Oh, okay. He plays the uh, the serial killer. Ooh. And then, ironically, uh, Doctor. Oh God, what's his name? The Doctor in the Silence of the Not Hannibal Lecter, but uh, the Doctor, the Warden at the jail. Yes, Doctor Chil- Chilton. Chilton. Chilton's in it just for a minute, and it's a very small cast. It's like it's so three. funny. I know that know the name. Yeah, Doctor Chilton. One of my Chilton. favorite movies. I'm about to watch so it. I, my, it's my I favorite. Love movie. One of my favorite movies. That's my favorite. Um, mm-hmm. So, you know, it's a it's a very much a thriller, very small cast. You know, it's real good. It's yeah. scary. So every night for October, you're watching a scary movie with you and your and your spouse. Yes. Good for you. Good for you. So speaking of scary, I've just finished the Haunting of Bly Manor. Oh my gosh, so good. So Stephen good. and Jeff have been encouraging me to watch it for the last two weeks. And I had other people texting me, Shannon, you got to watch it. Shannon, I'm like, oh my God, what's the big deal? But I kept forgetting it was a big deal when The Haunting of Hill House came out two years ago. And mm-hmm. phenomenal production phenomenal. of who was haunted by this house and by their actual, it's so funny. It's not really the haunting of the house. It's what, ha- what they did to make the house haunted, right? Right. Yeah. History, history. So, you just started watching The Haunting of Bly Manor. We're thinking the third episode. Three? So we, yeah. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Wait, the first 20 minutes engrossed, right? And into it. Yes. Into it. Into it. So the narrator has his voice of butter, as you can already, you know, the narrator who's telling the story behind the scenes has his voice butter. of butter. Butter. Gold. So keep this in mind when you watch episode seven and eight. It, it, the cinematography 
of this of these this, this particular production is so exquisite. Um, and I'm not no spoilers, no spoilers. But how she describes the history of the house in episode seven. Episode seven. Academy. It's Academy. Oh, really? Winning. Okay. There needs to be a episode. There needs to be a category just for her for voice over. <laughs> Her being a narrator, this one, the, the, the older lady who tells the story. Who is Alex, uh, who's actually Carla Gagino, right? She's Correct. The, okay. She's Carla we, Gagino. She, yes. Are, are, we, are we giving anything away from telling? Oh, God, I think we're spoiling who, the, the older lady who's at the party and in yeah. the story. Just say that, just, I can just say this. The, if you watched uh, The Haunting of Hill House, there are some of the same actors that are in Correct. It. So. Just a, it's almost like the it's almost like American Horror Story where they use the same actors but they were mm -hmm. different characters, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Like Henry Thomas Elliot of ET is now right. Mr. Wingrave and girl, girl, he's so excellent. The thing is that he's our, he's our age, Devin. He's mm -hmm. he's forty. He was born in nineteen seventy one. Mm -hmm. Older than me, and he looks like an old man. He does. Yeah, I still really, I still refer to him as Elliot, like you just said. Me I'm too. Like, oh, He's Elliot. always gonna be Elliot. Elliot. He's always gonna be Elliot from ET. <laughs> always. always, totally. But he, he has this English accent in the show, and he huh? is excellent. Once you you find out what what happens with him in, in episode four and five, and okay. this is drama. This is not a scary movie. This is a drama. This is a scandal. A scandal. Oh, it's like very uh, uh um, what do you call it? Novella, telenovela. It is a very telenovela. Very you got telenovela. scary and you got telenovela. And you're like, whoa, oh, this is okay. good. It's some juicy drama. I also, think. I heard that you finished, or is it finished yet? Or you're caught up, I guess, on Lovecraft County. I, it. I had to watch part? every episode two or three times each. So good. That show's so What's good. the finale? No, not yet. Oh, you want to watch the finale yet? It's okay, so we have the finale, it's in place. It was, it was last Sunday. Okay, so I'll watch it. We'll watch it probably so, this, this week. Speaking of Lovecraft Country, again, um, such an unusual production. Every episode was so unique, and it felt like I was watching a season finale of each show. That's how good a production value was, wasn't it? It's so good. Storyline, black it, cast, it's... just the, the, the history of Jim Crow, the history of Tulsa, you'll see. Yeah, if, you, if you're one of those people out there that are saying like, uh well white lives matter too all lives matter just go watch lovecraft and please. you understand it's kind of a, a message to you a um, huge message yeah the, the show counters on racism sexism um gender gender um fluidity um uh, uh women empowerment um it, it surfaces on family values um the environment um just on uh, the history of, 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 of being a black woman and how we were just downtrodden since day one. Um, and there was that epic, that epic episode when Ruby was talking to, um, at that, I hope you, saw, hope you watched that episode, is when who, Ruby was talking to, who was the white guy's name, who is the, um, the Gordon yeah. guy's name? I can't remember his name. I always call him Eric, Eric Norton because he reminds me of Eric Norton from Two Blood, Alexander Sarsgaard. <laughs> oh, right. to Eric Norton. Absolutely. What's his name? I don't know. Ah. Yeah. Anyways, but, yeah. when Ruby was talking to at that, because you know, what episode? I don't want to spoil. What episode are you on? Oh, we're at least five or five in or so. Okay, uh, so you know that Christina is him, and right, right. And that episode when Ruby turns into the white woman, which was epic. Oh my God, that's what I wanted to say. Epic I FX. I mean, okay, so there's a there's a black woman. And she gets to be a white woman, okay, mm -hmm. by a potion, okay? Yes. And she gets to live the white life for yes. a certain amount of hours every day. Yes. So I'll just leave it at that. But remember there was a scene when she was talking to the white, again, I can't remember his name, Christina's other alter ego. Right. And she was saying how she just wants to live a life that's uninterrupted. She, just, she doesn't want to be interrupted anymore. Not because she is a woman, because she's a black woman. And I can attest to that. I can attest. A lot of women, period, can attest to not being interrupted. But when you are a woman of color, woo, that scene, I just raced to it and totally breathed and inhaled. And I was like, wow, I know exactly what she was talking about. 
you know, you guys, it's, the, the, this is, this, this whole episode, I don't know if it was episode four or five, but it was so revealing in so many ways on, you know, did we ever wish that we were ever white? You know, do you ever wish that you were black, Evan? Devin, did you ever wish you were a black man? Yeah. You did? Yeah, for sure. You when you were younger or just now or what? I mean, so racist, <laughs> so racist of me to, to say things like uh, what I'm about to kind of hint at. But yeah, you know, I wish I was black in, in some ways. <laughs> you know, they have I great, wonder what they, they, they're you know, great. I wonder muscles. what. I wonder <laughs> in what way. <laughs> they have great muscle definition, all of that. Great skin. Well, it, it really questioned. It was a very revealing. Oh, there's a podcast, by the way. Did you listen to the podcast? There's a oh of, yeah, I want to podcast with the with one of the writers. Her name is actual Shannon too. Okay. And a podcast, uh, um, another, she, she hosts another podcast, I forgot her name, but I've listened to every podcast when the show aired because it gives you more tea. It gives you more in depth. Mm -hmm. Okay, got it. Writers were thinking of what mm -hmm. the history of certain things were. And I was like, wow, that's really interesting. Different themes that we didn't think about, some revelations that were revealed in the show that they were behind the scenes. I'm like, and that's the reason why they thought about certain things in the production right. and created their certain uh, storyline. Uh -huh. so listen to the podcast love country podcast and it's sponsored by HB hbo hbo mm -hmm. my favorite episode is the episode where he goes back to uh korea yes kumio that's i mean whoever dp'd that that episode beautiful like beautiful. everything was just it reminded me of uh the beautiful I don't know, there was a movie back in the, the, the early aughts, and it's when I worked at Sony, but I can't think of the name of it right now, but it looked like, it was a, a Japanese movie. It was my, my concubine? No, I don't remember. Anyway, it looked like that same guy. It just so shot so well. So, shot so well. Like, Acted well, everything. Jordan Peele, he's, I think he's becoming more of a genius than anything, and yeah. an executive producer. Mm -hmm. he, he teams with J.J. Abrams on this project. So you got the Jordan Peele aspect of the weirdness and the, the, the socialism of blackism and racism and, and, and division. And then you have the J.J. Abrams, who is the wild, imaginative, new Steven Spielberg. Mm -hmm. Star Wars mm -hmm. to, you know, to- It's got that the, magic to it. That it's got the magic to it. Type Perfect magic. collaboration. Uh -huh. um, yeah. So just to, just, to, just to know you guys are watching what who are the big minds on behind behind this production makes obvious sense it's going to be successful you know and it's a taste it is definitely a taste it is like you watch the first episode and you're like what the hell am i watching what did i just what what am i watching like how is uh jackie robinson <laughs> killing an alien and then some gorgeous black um aliens coming down and kissing <laughs> like what what am i <laughs> what's going on here it and is like demon a dogs coming from the oh my god and with with the 100 eyes and their back like what, what am i and then all and he's killing the sheriff racist sheriff like but huh. I'm hooked i was hooked. hooked i was like yeah. what and every episode was funkier than the next oh for sure i'm like wait, i can't sure. wait till they get this together i can't wait till they combine and let us know the full circle of all this is happening while we're talking about entertainment uh, I want to segue back real quick and because this has to deal with travel and I told you to watch it. I don't know if you'd started watching it yet. What Have is you it? you started watching uh, The Long Way Up on Apple, Apple TV Plus? The Long Way Up? The Long Way Up. It's with uh, Ewan McGregor. And you oh, that's when he's traveling around the world from, he, called, he starts from um, Antarctica, right? Yes. Argentina. Or it starts from uh, uh, for, uh, Argentina, the very far, farthest point in Patagonia. Yes. There's 13,000 miles through 13 countries by electrical motorcycle. Motorcycle, yeah. run, And there's a crew of, uh, of uh, people that are, you know, traveling with them, of course. And they're in electric trucks, electric, it's all electric, that are prototypes. Both the bikes and the trucks are both prototypes. So they're just doing this and going with God because they have to, to get through this because none of this stuff is tested or approved. It is so great, and is it? Um, you will love it because it's travel goes to all these countries, beautifully filmed, and it's dealing with all the different cultures that they have to deal with. 
Okay, that I gotta go watch in it. And out these countries, and we're just now to uh, the episode where they they just came from oh, La Paz in uh, Bolivia. So we okay. talked about Bolivia. I think yeah. Bolivia was one of the places I wanted to to, to yeah. visit on the Lake Titicaca. Lake Titicaca. They just took the ferry over Lake Titicaca, the highest <laughs> lake in the world. So now this check was that their, show out. This is their third season though, because they did this two season. They've uh -huh. two seasons that they did mm -hmm. for in Europe and in Africa, right? Yeah, the long way down, or then the other one. The, the, all and one in Australia? I think so. I'd have to look Australia? that up, but I, okay. yeah, there are two other seasons, I believe. Yeah. Check so it he's out. He's done this as, a, as an actual series series. Yeah, it's like eight, into eight it. episodes, I think. You I looked at it, I, I, because we're, in, be, I think because we're in COVID and we're still in, we're in the pandemic, we're still in shutdown in some sort of way, or we're inundated with all this production. I'm interested to see what is what are we gonna get next year in 2021 in terms of entertainment? Because if they were locked down for six months of production and not make, working on shows, obviously they could still do the writing and still do pre-production. What is our entertainment going to look like to 2021? Because all the movies that are supposed to be up in this summer have mm -hmm. been made. Wonder right. Woman, James Bond, you know, there was going to be another Marvel movie. There was going to be, um, 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 you know, the blockbuster, we were going to have our blockbuster summer. Are they moving that now to 2021 or Christmas 2020? You know, what is our, what is our entertainment going to look like next year? Because I'm overwhelmed with all of my Netflix, my Apple, my Hulu, Amazon Prime. <laughs> so much. It's like makes me, gives me anxiety. There's so much TV to watch. There's so much TV to watch. And it's excellent. Excellent. I don't even, I don't even know the last time I watched any network TV. And I should get rid of my cable. I don't even know why I have my cable. I should get rid of my cable. But I want to see the local news. I want right. to see the Academy Awards. I want to see all the award shows. And you can't really see those on, For sure. you know, and that. Speaking of that, did you know they're getting rid of Charlie Brown? Like Apple bought all the Charlie Brown content, the Christmas, the Thanksgiving, the, you know, Charlie Brown um, Halloween. I that is so greedy. That is so oh. greedy. Yeah, I know about it. <laughs> I know a little something about it. And I think that's so greedy because everybody can't afford an Apple subscription. And Apple, mm -hmm. I want to go flip on Channel Two or CBS and watch "It's a Thanks Happy Thanksgiving" Charlie Brown. And I want to watch "It's a Christmas" Charlie Brown on my regular TV, not because I have an Apple subscription. Dang mm -hmm. Apple! Maybe they'll figure that out or something. I don't know. Maybe they'll figure it out. Yeah, maybe they will. I, you know, that wasn't that wasn't. I was, that was some entertainment tea that I was not in agreements with this week. I was like, Where, was that, that come out on Deadline or something? It was on all the, uh, the, new, the entertainment news channels this week. Uh, that people that. acquired the Charlie Brown uh, catalog for all the holiday. And they, you can't watch it on regular TV. You got to buy a subscription. Like, they could literally buy the world. Like Apple has $2 trillion. Can you imagine? <laughs> I want $2 trillion. $2 trillion. That's a lot of money. <laughs> it's a lot of suitcases. Oh my God. Oh yeah. We're so going over our time. Oh, what time is it? Um, oh my God. Of course. Oh my God. <laughs> okay. So it, anything else you want to cover? Uh, um, it looks like we're good. I think we're good on, on all that. I forgot I had a cough with my brother. Um, <laughs> well, you can cut out whatever you want to cut out. That's the beauty um, of it. Yeah. Absolutely. That's, that's what, that's what editing is all about. So in conclusion, what else is going on? That's um, just trying to figure out what's going to happen for the holidays, uh, travel travel wise. Um, you know, trying to figure out those details. That's really kind of what's taking up uh, any free time that I'm not uh, working, you know, spending working. Uh, and we're trying to. We, we've thought we'd go somewhere for a month and or for the month. Yeah, of you guys were considering that. But we, we we can't make a decision. It's just hard. You guys, yeah. all you gotta do is bring a, take your computer and pack and get, get, get away. Yep, it's just, a, it just depends on like, what state are we going to? Are we gonna go to Utah? Are we gonna go to Colorado? Are we gonna go to Montana? Are all you gotta go to do is go to VRBO and, and check a place out and get it for a month. That's you right. Take, you take little baby puppy with you and- Oh, he's, he's ready, he's ready. So that's the only thing that's really kind of happening right now. Um, what are your plans I, for the holidays? With not going, I don't think we're going to Texas, but you, I was going to tell you something. Um, I actually put on, because it's fall here now. It feels like it's fall, It's right? all this week in LA, it's been fall. So nice. Sweater weather, actually, it's sweater weather. Sweater weather. Sweater weather. Sweater weather. 
I put on my clothes yesterday. I got dressed, girl. I put on some black blue jeans. Look at you. Yes, I forgot my little shimmer here. I love it. What's going on? I got the, you know, you know. The the girls are out. The girls are out. Um, I put on like a sweater yesterday and a pair of black jeans and uh, we went out and ran our errands. I was like, oh my God, I put on clothes. Yeah, I got to put on clothes. It was so nice to feel almost like presentable. Like, you I mean, you know, we had to go on video to, at work and stuff like that. And so you just throw on a shirt real quick and right. do your thing. You, can, you don't even have like, to have underwear on if you don't want to. You don't have to do whatever you want. But yeah, it felt nice to put on some, some clothes and step out. Yeah, exactly. Speaking of okay. stepping out, I want to uh, offer a call. We have to still schedule a shopping and lunch day. Yes. Good. Like soon, too. Right. Yeah. Like in November. We'll do it in November. Let's it's, do it in November. Absolutely. It's going to be the holidays and we can be like jolly. Yay. By that, I mean I drink a lot. Thank you so much, Devin, for coming on the show. We got to do a little picture. We got to do a little screenshot. So let's get ready for a screenshot. Oh, okay. I'm like, with, with or without glasses? Either way, you, either way you're, you're super handsome, no matter okay. what. Thank you. Oh, that's so sweet. Let me, uh, let's just do it. Let's, Screenshot gonna... time. <laughs> Is that it? That's Is it. That it? <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you for having me. I love this. It's like therapy. My therapy. It is therapy. I, I miss you so you. much. I miss I'm seeing just... you. Um, you know, you all, you and you and your spouse are always available to come over. We can do an alfresco dinner. Oh, but we, we already did that already, right? We did that, yeah. So we'd love you know, yeah. I miss entertainment at my home. I know. I know you do. I had my floors um, steamed twice. So everything's pretty sanitary in the house here. You test. You test like a champ. You test it all the time. That's good Yeah, heck yeah. Heck yeah. I want to get tested. I want to make sure I'm safe with everybody. It's just a whole new world, but I'm so glad you're here in it. You're in my world. I'm in your world. Thank you for being in my world. Yay. So, so thank yeah. you. Okay, thank and you. And Rods, thank you for watching and listening to us. We, we miss you. We're going to have more episodes coming up to you, coming out to you soon. And um, we want to say thank you for still subscribing and listening to the podcast, watching this podcast for a broadcast podcast. And um, I'm going to sign off and we're going to do our famous sign off. So I want to say, Rods, thank you for listening. And oh my God, I forgot what, what my what is my sign off? It's been so long. <laughs> and tune in thank next you. week. I don't know, or next month, or however frequently you're doing it. But I want to say thank you for listening to Abroad. <laughs>